Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to take you along the next step of my project in flasking orchid seed. If you've watched some of my recent videos, you would have seen that I deflasked orchid. If you're interested in seeing these videos and also some updates on how the plants are doing, these would be linked up here. For the uninitiated, let me just kind of give you a quick run through what flasking orchid seeds actually means. So if you think about growing plants and if you think about kind of seeding a seed, you usually just put them into soil and let them do their thing. This doesn't really work with orchids though because orchid seeds lack an endosperm. And endosperm is a fancy botany term for basically a reservoir of nutrients that the little baby plant can use as it grows to produce new tissue. And if you think about it, you know, producing new tissue growing, that requires some energy and some nutrients. And this energy has to come from somewhere. And so now if you're thinking, okay, orchids don't have this storage, how do they do it then? And the answer to that is, as they do so often, orchids actually kind of draw on other resources. They, they ally with fungi to basically provide them with the energy budget that they need in the beginning. And so we see what they do is they basically form like a little contract. They basically say, look, fungus, you know that in the future I'm going to provide a lot of sugary sap to you. Why don't you, in exchange, give me a loan, so to speak, in the beginning, give me some nutrients so I can grow and then once I'm ready to grow, I'll pay you back. And this works beautifully in nature, however it's very hard to replicate this in a lab, let alone in a home environment where I'm doing this. So basically the way um, grow orchid in, is by in vitro culture. And what that means is you have a medium that already contains everything the seed would need and you just put it on there and let it absorb the nutrients itself without any fungi. This requires media that contains nutrients as I said. If you have anything that contains nutrients it's the perfect breeding ground for microorganisms you might not want there. So you can have bacteria and fungi, especially molds, grow on this media and it can lead to rot issues in your plant. Obviously we don't want that, so we need to keep these media sterile. For those of you who don't know, I'm a PhD student in RNA biochemistry. As such, I have learned throughout my studies how to handle different kinds of cells like bacteria and also human cells to culture them in an aseptic way. I'm going to try to replicate this as best as I can at home without getting too fancy with it. And basically the first step we have to do when we are interested in any culture is what media do we need? Media that I'm going to use for growing orchid seeds is this. So I have, in a, in a recent video, I purchased some flasking media from Equagenera Europe and I got SBLA and FBLC. Equagenera doesn't really tell you what exactly this media is made of, but what we can assume is that it contains agar and this is a polysaccharide that will ensure that the media is solid. So we're not growing them in liquid culture, but we're growing them on top of like an agar layer. Other than that, the only thing I know is that SBLA is for Vanda and this another genus that I've never heard of. It's called Perhalinopsis. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Um, I'll just write it here. Perhalinopsis. If you've ever heard of this, uh, please let me know. I'd love to learn from you and your experience. This is a genus I've never heard of. I've never seen them and I certainly don't grow any of them. So yeah, please let me know what that is. And the other medium, SBLC, is for Cattleya dendrobium and Epidendron. So I guess like general monopodial orchids for this one and then the SBLC is for sympodial orchids. Yeah. Other than agar to kind of solidify the media, I expect this to contain some carbohydrates to give the plant some energy. Carbohydrates are usually what organisms draw energy from. And then we also, I expect, have some maybe nitrogen sources. I don't know how complex these would be. Maybe I can just have a quick smell. Okay, so... So that's a very non-scientific way of smelling. It's you're, Technically, if you're in a lab, you're supposed to be like... But girls, like, who are we kidding here? Let's not get too extra. 
Yeah, so this smells, if you've ever made media in a lab for uh, bacteria, to me this smells a little bit like maybe yeast extract or tryptones. These are components that you would use for rich and complex media to provide your bacteria whatever you're growing with. Vitamins would also mainly nitrogen sources, so they are peptide rich components that you add to your media. And this has like this umami cheesy fragrance. I expect this to contain some sort of probably tryptone because yeast extract is very brownish and the color would show up in this mix. And yeah, basically the website, Equagenera's website, they say to just mix this with water. This amount is for one liter. I'm gonna just use half of it for half a liter. They say, okay, if you want to, you can add some additional supplements. They suggest banana puree, birch sap or pineapple juice. But if you use pineapple juice, they also say you have to adjust the pH because pineapple juice is very acidic. They also say you don't really have to add anything. So I'm just going to be lazy and I'm just not going to add anything because the more I add, the more complicated it gets. And I just want to see does this work at all. And I already have some distilled water here and just a little spoon and the media and I'm just gonna mix it and then if you if you look behind me I already have some glasses ready that I will pour the media into and it's going to be sterilized in this pressure cooker. As I said the first thing you have to do when thinking about uh, any culture of anything is what media do we use. This is the media we use and we know this is going to be very prone to growing fungi. And so what I want to do is sterilize it. And this is going to be done in the pressure cooker because under pressure we can reach a higher temperature with the water vapor inside and this is going to ensure that any microorganisms that are present are going to be eliminated and this also includes or hopefully our media is gonna stay nice and sterile. And in a follow-up video, I'm going to then also try to seed some orchid seeds onto this media, but this is in the future. So today we're just gonna get ready. Yeah, if you're interested in that, just stick around. I will try to leave links for the things I'm using in this video. So if you're interested in trying out some flasking at home, I will just share these with you. Okay, first things first. So what we usually do in the lab is we mix media and then it distribute it into the culture vessels after it's been sterilized. I don't want to do this because every time you manipulate something, you add another risk of contamination. And so I want to keep it simple, mix it, keep it kind of in suspension in here and just pour it into the glasses. And only after it's been distributed, sterilize it. This way I hope to kind of minimize the risk for contamination a little more. And basically the idea is I have the glass, I lock it, and then it should be safe for a while until I start Sewing. This little spoon is something I stole from my mom actually. She used to be really into making her own cosmetic, formulating. She doesn't do this anymore, but I really like this little spoon. So when I moved, I was like, oh, I have no idea where that went. I hope you can see this. I'm going to be very crude. Probably people watching are going to be like, oh, you have to weigh it. I'm like, yeah, at work I would, but. I'm literally at home, so gorged. Like, so let's just keep it simple. Gorge. So this is about half. And I'm just stirring. And so the important part is that I keep this mixture suspended. So you can see the solids are already coming down to the bottom of the um, container. That's going to mean that the top part is going to contain less media than the bottom. So I want to keep it in movement while I'm distributing it into the vessels that every container gets the same amount of media or like the same concentration of media. I wouldn't have to do this had I boiled this up first because then everything would be dissolved and I could distribute it. But as I said, I want to try to minimize the contamination risk. So I'm just doing it this way. Let's just turn around here and start pouring. As you can see, the solids have already sunken down, so I have to stir it up again. I mean, if people from work are watching, girl, just get over it. Like, this is not how I make my media at work. Like, Jesus Christ. And so the idea now is to just have a few centimeters of 
media in every glass just so the bottom is covered nicely and I'll just keep any leftover I have in this bigger glass here in case I want to make some more flasks I can just kind of heat this up again and then use it next step of course is we have to close them but it's important to not close them fully because otherwise they might burst while they're while they're being sterilized so I'll just keep them open a little bit just slightly loose so any pressure that builds up inside of them can just be released and obviously I'm using just some random jars of like pesto some jam uh, olives so yeah this is not like pro labware at all but that's also not the point of this okay and now I'm just going to place them inside the pressure cooker and as you can see there's already some water inside of this and this water is basically going to provide us with the steam we need to sterilize the media. I might not be able to get all of the glasses sterilized in one go which is kind of annoying. So one thing to keep in mind is that you don't want any tension between these glasses because they will expand as they heat up and I don't want them to get stuck or kind of break as the pressure increases by them expanding. So then I'm going to set it to the second pressure setting and there you go. So now we can take out our sterilized media. And as you can see, it's all liquid now. And now it has to be... Um, now the, the jars have to be firmly closed so that we prevent the introduction of any contamination. And then we can also put in the next load. 